and today we're finally going to talk about dog longevity. Why would you even be interested if you don't own a dog? Well, if we can see that sometimes something works in a diverse population of animals and it has a safety track record there, it more readily and quickly makes it into the human pharmaceutical chains and through clinical trials and so forth. And the other thing, dogs don't live as long as us, so if they start looking at them towards their end of life, we have data very quickly on what works on an older population. Uh, the other thing, for those of us that do own dogs, do you know that owning a pet may extend your life? There was a study in Uppsala, Sweden, uh, where they found that dog owners were 33% less likely to die early compared to non-dog owners. And there are other studies showing other pets do help as well. So, with the next two videos, I'm gonna do something just a little bit different. What I'm going to do is first, this one I'm just going to kind of just give you the news. What's the news, okay? I'm not going to give you a lot of tables and charts and, uh, you know, deep scientific explanations. The next video that I do on this will be the in-depth dive. So if you like all of that, deep dive, the charts, the science, and so forth, that's going to be for you too. I think you'll like both of them. So. Let's get on with dog longevity. So we all love our pets, and it's really heart-wrenching when we lose one. And the sad fact is they just don't live as long as us. So there are two groups working on dog longevity right now. One is at the, uni uh, the University of Washington and Texas A&M, and they're giving the antibiotic rampamycin to improve the health span of dogs. Uh, this is my favorite project of the two because they're starting with older dogs and dogs in the general population. So one dog might be with a long distance marathon runner. Another dog could possibly be with, uh, you know, a couch potato, okay? So you have different lifestyles, different environments. Someone might live in the clear country air. Someone might live in a polluted city. So that's the first thing. I have a website, uh, it's dogagingproject.org, and um, they've already completed their pilot study. And in their pilot study, well, in their pilot study, the next video, see the next video, I go into all the geeky detail, um, and for those that don't want to just listen here. Okay, so since they're starting with dogs that are often much older than five, we're going to see the results very quickly. Uh, we don't have to wait 10 years for the animal to age. And the other thing, for those of us that are older and in need of a therapy that's going to work for us as older individuals, we want to find something that works that you can give it to someone who's older. You don't have to start taking it when you're 20 or 16 or something for it to work. Okay, so it would be really nice if they could find something like vitamin D that they could just add to milk and then we could just drink it every day and that's it, done. But if you have to start when you're three years old, my longevity goose is cooked. So, something that works for older individuals is what I'm cheering for. Next up, George Church of Harvard. Yes, the founder of Nebula Genomics, the company where I got my whole genome sequenced, okay? He has a project um, starting, and um, well, just one thing, just as an aside, what do you think of all these high-profile scientists starting, you know, for-profit company? You know, they're making money. I mean, obviously the private sector has done it for years, but we've always expected scientists to have a higher degree of ethics, you know, for them to be our shining pinnacle. Um, do you think this is going to help us move things forward quickly, more quickly? Or do you think we're risking the ethics and the purity of the science? Okay. So anyhow, George Church is looking at mitral valve disease, MVD, and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. They're absolutely adorable. Uh, but they tend to be prone to heart disease. And that is where, in mitral heart, valve heart disease, is where one of the valves of the heart degrades, blood leaks between the chambers, scar tissue forms, and the heart works less effectively, and it can eventually lead to death. Now his lab and his company, Rejuvenate Bio, have already used their gene therapy on mice. And what they had, the mice had the mitral valve disease. And what they did is 
they're not using CRISPR and they're not, you know, introducing new genes. Instead, they're introducing genes using a classic method. And so they add something to the dog's genome. They don't modify or Frankenstein what's in there. And they reversed 85% of the scar tissue in their mice. Okay, so that's very interesting. It'd be really nice if those who get older, if we get heart disease, you can just get an injection of a couple of genes rather than, you know, invasive surgery. So they believe in the future, you know, because you know if you have a pet, you probably have a basket on the floor with toys piled high and treats and all sorts of things and different colored leashes and collars and so forth. It, those of us that have pets often go a little crazy, you know, it's true. And they believe if they're successful, the pet market will pay for the development of human interventions. I think that's clever. And I find this as promising and may help us move forward faster without waiting for government funding. Now, I know I'd be a lot happier to have my dog around longer, wouldn't you? So anyhow, I'm going to do a part two next and that will be up the following Friday. I'm going to try to do things every Friday for a bit. And uh, I will put links down in the bottom. And if you have a Cavalier Chink, uh, King Charles Spaniel, I'm putting the AK link in the com in the you know little description box below so you can go and look at it and see if they're, you know, make sure you you do take your dog to the vet regularly and so forth. So until next time, this is Judy Chalice with Lifespan and Longevity. Be sure to like, to share, and to comment. I love hearing from you. See you next time.